What is a crested duck and why is it impossible for them to be ethically bred? This is a crested duck. They have a distinct puff of feathers on their head. This puff is caused by a genetic deformity that creates a hole in their skull. That hole is then covered up with a layer of fat and connective tissue and on top is that big puff of feathers. If this genetic deformity occurs in the wild, it is very, very unlikely that that duck will live long enough to pass on those genes to their offspring, so that's why we don't really see it in the wild. We're able to keep these ducks as pets in captivity and continue passing on this gene because as humans, we are able to essentially mass produce these ducks. In the wild, a duck is only gonna have 10 or so ducklings maybe, but as pets and ducks that have been genetically altered to lay more eggs, we can have hundreds of these baby ducks hatch from just a single mother. And out of those hundreds of eggs, yeah, some of them are going to survive to breeding age and be able to pass on those genes because they haven't ran into any difficulties from their skull yet. As you can probably imagine, having a hole in your skull can cause a plethora of issues. Some of those issues include having bone spurs growing in all directions. So some of them go out of their skull, some of them go into their brain. And when they do go into their brain, they can cause blindness, loss of hearing, loss of motor control. Many of these ducks also suffer lifelong seizures that eventually lead to their death. And for the lucky ducks, they actually never hatch because their brains develop outside of their skull. But at least that means they don't have to suffer their entire lives because of bone spurs in their brain. I do think it's really important to mention though that not all crested ducks are gonna have these problems right from when they're born or even after they reach breeding age. You might have a duck that seems perfectly normal for years and then suddenly they start having seizures, those bone, bone spurs start growing into their brain and then the rest of your duck's life is going to be a very painful one. And I do just wanna mention that although it is extremely unlikely, there are cases of crested ducks living relatively long lives. However, normal breeding patterns for these ducks and even just a slight bump to the head could unfortunately cause them serious, serious problems because their brain is not protected with a full skull. And if you do have a crested duck that seems to be living a relatively normal pain-free life, you should still acknowledge that in order for your one duck to be living that relatively normal life, eight to 10 other ducks that would have been in that duck's clutch of eggs probably suffered a painful death. And how can it be ethical to produce one animal that lives a relatively normal life while eight others had to suffer for it? So why do we as a society continue to breed these ducks if we have the research and we know that they're going to live these awful painful lives? Well, the thing is most people that buy them don't know that they're gonna live awful lives. You walk into a feed store, you wanna get ducks, you see these ducks with a cute little poof on their head, you have no idea and the employees working at the farm store probably have no idea either. Most hatchery websites don't even mention the problems that this deformity can cause. But we can't put the blame on uneducated consumers because this information isn't necessarily talked about that often. I personally believe that if consumers knew this about their ducks, they wouldn't be buying them. And for those that do buy these ducks, they typically learn the hard way and then they head to forums or poultry pages on Facebook. They post about their duck and how their duck suddenly passed away. And that's when they learn about the crested gene. Unfortunately, on the other hand, there are people that do know about how horrible this gene is and yet they continue to breed for it because it makes them money. Some people breed these ducks to show them in poultry competitions where they are judged based on the guidelines set forth by the American Poultry Association's Standard of Perfection book. This book essentially outlines every single characteristic that these birds should have for their specific breeds, such as their weight, their color, um, things like that. As of right now, the only color varieties that the American Poultry Association recognizes in its standard perfection for crested ducks are black and white. So any other colors of ducks, they can still be shown, but they actually cannot win for their breed because they aren't recognized. But this doesn't stop people from trying to breed this gene into other types of ducks, such as call ducks, East Indies, Rowans, and Pekin ducks. The guidelines, according to the standard of perfection for crested ducks, they do want large, well-pronounced, perfectly centered on the top of their head crests, which would be fine, except that the larger the crest is, the larger their hole in their skull is. And when we bring up this topic of crested ducks, I do think it's really important that we differentiate them from crested chickens. Now there are some types of crested chickens that have problems, but that's caused by a vaulted skull, which is not the same thing as the crested duck skull. 
With chickens, there are actually crested breeds that don't have vaulted skulls at all. Plus, there are ethical breeders that breed these chickens that typically would have a vaulted skull without the vaulted skull and are still able to produce that puff on their head. Some places in the world have actually already taken action against the breeding of animals like this. Germany, for example, has the Animal Welfare Act, and in Article 11, Section B, it actually states that it is prohibited to breed vertebrates with lacking body parts or organs, resulting in pain, suffering, or harm. Therefore, making it completely illegal to breed these ducks and many other animals with genetic deformities in that country. We, as people who own ducks, especially people who own crested ducks, really need to separate ourselves from our personal experience with one of these crested ducks or a couple of them and our love for those animals as they are our pets and see the bigger picture and understand the research better and understand why even though they are beloved pets and they're cute and yours might be okay right now there's a bigger picture and there's actual research proving why these animals weren't ethically bred if you already own one do what you can to give them the best life possible. Low protein diets can help, but know that you shouldn't breed them and you shouldn't get more. And if you own a crested duck and someone ever expresses interest to you in owning one themselves, you should do your due diligence and explain to them why they shouldn't contribute to the breeding of these ducks. Some poultry fanciers will simply tell you that breeding these ducks isn't for the faint of heart and others will completely deny any scientific research that shows why breeding these ducks is unethical. While I was doing research on crested ducks, I actually came across one article that stated how poultry fanciers will often deny that it's unethical to breed these ducks. However, there is not one single scientific examination or study that cites that these ducks can be bred without harming them. If you want to argue that crested ducks can be ethically bred or you simply just want to learn more about crested ducks and their issues that they have, I encourage you to go to pubbed.gov and look up intracranial lymphomas in ducks. You will find a ton of research-backed articles and studies done on these ducks that talk a lot about the different issues that they have. So obviously these ducks already exist, so how do we fix this problem that we've gotten ourselves into? There's a couple things we can do. The ducks that already exist and are our pets, we care for them for the rest of their lives as best we can managing their problems. But don't buy more and don't breed more. If we don't buy them from hatcheries and farm stores, the farm stores are gonna be forced to put them on sale. They're gonna realize that this breed of duck is not profitable and they're not going to buy anymore. The hatcheries aren't gonna be getting pre-orders for them, so they're not gonna be hatching those eggs. We can also do our best to educate people on why these ducks aren't ethically bred. We can't prevent people from breeding these ducks and buying them if they're simply uninformed. And I personally also think that something that could really make a difference for these ducks is if we call on the American Poultry Association to change their standard of perfection to not allow crested ducks to be entered in shows. Breeders are breeding these ducks so that they win shows. They're breeding for the large crests on purpose. If we don't let them win with these ducks, they won't breed them and they'll move on to another more ethical breed. If the American Poultry Association can disqualify a duck from a show simply because it's missing a toe, they can disqualify a duck for having a crest too because they're both deformities. Personally, about a year ago, I actually reached out to the president of the American Poultry Association, asked him what we could do to remove this breed from the standard of perfection and no longer allow these birds to be shown. And his response to me was that the American Poultry Association does not have a process for removal of breeds, but that he would like to get more educated on this subject. Although it has been almost a year and obviously nothing has changed. And I hope that someday, not just for crested ducks, but for every animal that is bred with very painful deformities, that there will be legislation that doesn't allow these animals to be bred simply for human enjoyment anymore.